Kitty the Toon, the world's first inland colony. Text by John Miles and artwork by Barry Robson. Kitty flies over the Baltic Art Centre and the Sage in Gateshead. One stormy day, strong winds blew a flock of seagoing gulls called Kittywakes up the River Tyne to Newcastle. The Kittywakes looked at their new surroundings and thought, this looks familiar to the cliffs where we normally nest. But instead of cliffs, there were tall buildings close to water, bridges stretching over the water and plenty of ledges to build their nests on. This really could be a good place to live, said the Kittywakes. Kittywakes are no strangers to travelling over land and sea to find food. They fly thousands of miles through the winter, even to the coast of Canada, before getting back to England in time to breed each spring. Sometimes they use the Tyne Gap, which is the shortest distance across mainland England between the Solway in the west and the North Sea in the east. Mr and Mrs Kittywake settled down to their courtship. They flew around shouting their distinctive calls which gives them their name. Kittywake! 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 This encouraged other Kittywakes to do the same. It reminded them of the big colonies they nested in around the coast of Britain. Once the courtship was over, the Kittywakes began to build a nest. An ideal place was chosen. In this case, it was the ledge of a windowsill on the big Premier Hotel. This was certainly a Premier location for a new family of Kittywakes to be born and raised. The Kittywakes collected bits of grass and weeds from the surrounding pavements and added them to the nest. They were glued down by their own poo and sticky mud. The female Kittywake laid three eggs in the nest and she had the job of sitting on them for 30 days keeping the eggs warm while her mate collected food for her from close to the fish factory downriver at North Shields. It was a wonderful day when the three eggs hatched. Mrs Kittywake had been sitting most of the time for 30 days, feeling the movement inside the eggs as the chicks grew. She could even hear faint cheeping sounds coming from them before they hatched. The eggs cracked and an egg tooth on the chick's beak made a bigger hole in each egg. Then out popped a new kittywake to the world. Mum and Dad were so excited. They flew around the bridge calling their tune, kittywake, kittywake, over and over again. People in the hotel looked out in amazement at the birds flying around, not knowing they were seeing this great occasion for the seabirds. The manager of the hotel, Chubby Peters, walked out of the door to look up at the birds flying around overhead. After a while, the chicks started to grow out of their fluffy down into their first feathers. But there was something happening that made them look very different from their mum and dad. They were growing the black and white colours of the local football team, Newcastle United. Right along the wings was a black and white stripe seen on the footballers' shirts and on the scarves of the fans. They asked their mum what this was for. It's so you can blend in with the locals, she said. But the colours will help protect you from predators who want to kill and eat you, said Dad. They stared down onto the people below and sure enough, dozens of them were wearing black and white shirts and scarves. Kitty and her brothers had to sit around for almost five weeks waiting for the big day when their wings would be strong enough to take them away from the cramped window ledge and out over the River Tyne. The big day came with a wind from the west. After a lot of flapping, Kitty flew up and up into the air and shortly after her brothers did the same. It was amazing. Higher and higher they went but Kitty thought, how do I land? Mum called out, try the water! And sure enough, with a big splash, Kitty was soon sitting in the River Tyne. This was the first time that she had been in the water. How nice and cool it felt. 
Her brothers flopped down beside her, tired out after their first flight, but the feeling was great. Kitty flew up again into the air. Her muscles were getting stronger. Around and around the massive buildings and bridges she flew, over the traffic and away from the small boats on the river. This was fun. Other young kittywakes were flying around, but some were making for a strange building called the Sage in Gateshead. This building had no sides, no real roof or chimneys. It must have been built especially to stop kittywakes nesting on it. Its shape made it ideal for practicing sliding. Several kittywakes were already at there at the highest point. They dropped onto this funny looking building and slid all the way down towards the river, jumping off at the last minute. This looked like fun. Kitty had a go. What a speed! Then whoosh! Back into the air and round again she went. People inside the building looked up through the windows. They'll make the glass dirty, they shouted. But none of the kittywakes were bothered. It was a slide built just for kittywakes. What generous people, thought Kitty. Saturday came around and there were more people than ever in their black and white gear. They were all walking to one huge building, the football stadium. What's going on, thought Kitty. She flew over the stadium, looking down on all the black and white over most of the ground. She felt so glad she fitted in. Some football players were dressed in black and white like the fans. Others were all white. They ran around with everyone cheering them on. It was a football match with players on the pitch. Suddenly, a big bird of prey in red darted down towards Kitty. Is this what Dad had warned her about? Her black and white colours could save her life. At first, she was over an area of white where fans of the visiting team were gathered. The bird of prey could see her very well. Down, down she went, sweeping over the black and white fans as fast as she could go. The big bird of prey lost sight of her in all that dazzling black and white. How grateful Kitty was for the tune. The crowd cheered when the ball went into the net and Kitty called her call. Kitty wake, kitty wake, kitty wake. Several young birds flew over the, flan the fans and called along with the crowd. What a wonderful occasion it was. All this had made Kitty really tired, so she landed on a green grass close to on the green grass close to a white line. A man dressed in black with a flag in his hand rushed towards her. Oh dear, it's time to go, she thought. The man was rushing to keep up with the game. Kitty flew up, up into the air and over the ground back to the river. She had a quick slide down the sage, then flew off downstream along the river. After two weeks, the magic of the sea drew Kitty down the river Tyne into the North Sea. Now she would have to fend for herself, catching small fish and sand eels. She would be competing in a big world with many other birds such as terns, big great black-backed and herring gulls and skewers as well as other kittiwakes. Away from the tune, her black and white plumage would start to fade and in time the colours of her mum and dad would appear. She would look smart with her pale grey wings tipped with black. Even her neat black collar would disappear. In three years time, when she returned to the Tyne to nest, she would have to find herself a mate and a place to nest around the same area where she too had started life, calling out that wonderful sound. Kitty wake, kitty wake, kitty wake. And you've been listening to Kitty the Toon, the world's first inland colony. Text by John Miles and artwork by Barry Robson.